Minister, all forms of discrimination are wrong. Uh, everybody who lives in this country uh, is a citizen of this country and must have equal rights. And a republic is built on the idea that all citizens are equal. And aim to opposes all forms of discrimination and we oppose all in incitements to violence. And we believe that incitement to violence is wrong and it's a criminal act uh, and should be treated as such. Words do matter. Words matter a lot. Words can cast lights, they can educate, they can build up, they can get to the truth. Words can hold people to account and words can inspire. And words are the framework of thought. Uh, our thought processes are built on words. Words are the vehicles of ideas and we know that these ideas can actually change for good and can change for bad. Now, the, a liberal democracy is built upon the idea of allowing ideas to compete with each other so that we as a society can test, challenge, measure the value of those ideas. And it's only true the articulation of these ideas freely and respectfully that we can allow them to compete. And it's through that competition that we can empirically choose what's the best solutions for our society uh, in, with regards to the problems that we face. In a citizen's republic, each individual has and should have an equal right to that articulation of views and the equal uh, articulation of speech uh, as well. And in the civil so uh, society, we need to do that respectfully. And that's really, really important. And I think one of the biggest jobs we have to do in this country is to raise our children with the idea that, we, yes, we question, we challenge and we test, but we do so in a manner that does not cause hurt uh, to others. It amazes me at times, though, I have to say, especially looking at social media, that we often see that the people who dress themselves up in the colour of, of love and inclusivity are often the people who actually are involved in shutting debate down uh, and stopping uh, those ideas being discussed as well. Um, you know, I, I've seen debates happen on social media, I'm sure you have as well, especially with J.K. Rowling, for example, where many people who dress themselves up in the idea of inclusivity have been involved in actually threatening to beat, rape, assassinate and bomb the likes of J.K. Rowling for having certain views, views that they don't believe they sh she should have and views that they think is actually hate speech because she holds them uh, as well. So the fears of people in terms of this bill that you're proposing here are not theoretical fears. These are real fears. The cancel culture and the censorship culture that exists at the moment is on steroids in, in many ways. And people fear that that is encroaching into the realm of honest, respectful debate on real issues affecting people. And the history of censorship does not end well, Minister, in any ways uh, whatsoever. Censorship is an authoritarian uh, act. It deletes the liberty of citizens and it deletes that competition of ideas that we discussed earlier. And it reduces people's ability to challenge and test the prevailing ideologies within a society. So it not only erases the rights of citizens uh, in, in terms of, of, of articulation of their views, but it radically prevents people from stopping the significant swings that can happen in a society in relation to whichever ideological wind is blowing at a certain time. Now, it used to be the case that censorship was a tool of the political right. It used to be the case that the left actually fought censorship and demanded um, that we support the individual's rights to articulate uh, views. But that, in many parts of the world now, is, is not the case. Uh, many people uh, from that political view, I think, have become distracted by the culture wars and identity politics and have, become, have forgotten about the bread and butter issues that are affecting the people that they're meant to uh, serve. And you know, many even admit that these tools can be used to help them engineer the society that they want to achieve. Um, I remember speaking to, with former colleagues of mine in Sinn Féin in years gone by, and I was one of the many who opposed Section 31. And I suppose I opposed it because of the idea that it censored people's views uh, in relation to what happened. So I am amazed and listen to Sinn Féin here today say that they are going to vote for a bill and support a bill that will encroach upon people's ability uh, to speak freely and respectfully about issues uh, of real importance. Um, it also amazes me, too, that we come from a society, especially in the 1950s, where censors, we probably were one of the most censored societies in the whole of Europe at that time, and the negative consequences of that were significant and are very clear to us as a society today. 
But in many ways, 70 years later, the same mirror image instincts are manifesting themselves uh, in terms uh, of some of these debates. I also want to mention the, the importance of pluralism in a liberal democracy. And you know, we know that tolerance of plural outlooks in society is necessary for cohesion and for the competition of ideas. And for pluralism, it must mean that we allow for mutually opposing ideologies to exist simultaneously. And to quote um, the, 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 the sentence that's attributed to Voltaire, you know, I may not agree with what you have to say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. And that's a foundation stone, would you agree, Minister, in terms of a pluralist society. But I think Minister Helen McEntee's version of that quote is, I may not agree with what you have to say, and I may put you in jail for actually saying that, uh, in, in, in fairness. And that's the opposite to what pluralism uh, means. Now, obviously, words can defame. Words inflame, they can divide, they can destruct. They can rob a person or an organization of a good name. And words can and do lead to violence and death. And in the modern society with, the, with, with social media, those words can be amplified uh, like never before. Damage can literally go viral in, in, in minutes. Uh, but there has to be a balance of rights, uh, Minister. Uh, we need to be able to have a society where we have freedom to articulate, to challenge, to hold to account. And we also need to protect the reputations of, of people. And opponents of the, this bill are not absolutists in terms of freedom of speech. Most ordinary people would support prohibition to uh, incitement uh, to uh, violence uh, and uh, violence on the basis of hatred. Most people would have no problem with that. Uh, but what this law is identifying and is going down towards is much further than that. And I believe this bill actually damages that particular uh, balance. And one of the major problems, and that has been mentioned uh, already in this chamber, is the lack of clarity in the definitions that exist in this bill. And that is a major problem, Minister, because what you need to do is you need to proof those definitions against whatever judge might be sitting in whatever court and sometime in the future. And we know that you know, views and uh, ideas on many issues that we're discussing today are quite fluid. That in five years' time, many people will have different views in relation to certain ideas. Now, the Irish Council of Civil Liberties themselves have said that the definitions on incitement to hatred and the protections of freedom of expression are not clear enough. The ICCL states that the creation of an offence for preparing or possessing materials with your views in your home with a view to making them public goes too far and is an infringement on privacy. And they say that possessing material in your home without a clear intention of, uh, of ever making them public should not be an offence. So it is an incredible idea that we could be having Gardaí going in to search people's homes on that basis. And I agree with uh, the, 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 the previous speaker in relation to this, that that enters into the idea of thought policing minister. Also, hatred, we are told um, by the minister, is a key reason for this bill. Yet, hatred, the word, is not defined anywhere in this bill. I absolutely oppose hatred. I would say that calling for violence against people is hatred and should be illegal. But others would define hatred as saying that a woman is a female adult. And that's, again, not a theoretical issue. In Britain, police have arrived at the homes of citizens under hate speech law because individuals tweeted the sentence, a woman is a female adult. Um, the definition of gender in the bill is not a definition at all either. Um, it basically says that a, the definition of gender is what the individual decides it to be. Now, you know, some people say that there are 72 genders uh, currently at the moment, and some people say that actually putting a limit on the numbers of genders that exist is itself absolutely wrong. Uh, and these can have serious consequences uh, in people's lives. And it's important to say that we, in many ways, are in a political and uh, media bubble uh, in a lot of our debates here at the moment. Most people in Irish society would adhere to the scientific understanding of gender. Most people would believe that a woman is a female adult. Uh, and most people would believe that that sentence is not transphobic. And, you know, we had a group of women who spoke on the Joe Duffy show a number of weeks uh, ago. They articulated uh, their fear about you know, potentially allowing men who identify themselves as women, um, not people who um, um, have uh, real issues in, in, in terms of gender identity, but people who may use uh, that opportunity 
uh, for their own uh, reasons, etc. They were fearful that women's safe spaces would not continue into the future. And they articulated that view very respectfully on that show, calmly uh, on that show. And it was a wonderful opportunity because the Joe Duffy show is one of those few opportunities where real people get a chance to discuss the issues that are important to themselves. Most of the radio and television shows that we listen to are people from the bubble that we uh, live in, in politics uh, and in media. Um, and yet, after that calm and respectful articulation of these fears, there was a significant backlash uh, in relation to those views. Many people said they were transphobic. Many people said that those views were hate speech. And actually, uh, it was an incredible situation that Dublin Pride actually broke a, or, uh, left a partnership that they were involved in with RTE on the basis of that. Now, you know, Minister, do you believe that women who say that uh, a woman is an adult female, that that's transphobic? Do you believe that that's hate speech? And do you, would you say that it's possible that a judge in future might have th those views uh, and implement your legislation uh, on the back of that? That's a, a really important uh, question. I think that we have to get to. Um, there, I, I do think that there has been a significant shift in the political bubble in recent times uh, in relation to these ideas. Um, I think that the government have taken a policy currently of gender affirmation. I spoke to a teacher recently to who told me that he attended an in-service day and a person from his department had told him not to use the words mother and father in class anymore, that those words uh, were not inclusive words. Uh, if you go onto the NCCA website, which uh, provides um, sources for teachers to be able to deal with uh, these issues in school, uh, one of the pieces of advice states that teachers should not call to attention the class by using the words boys and girls, because again, that those words were not inclusive. We saw the government, you know, very recently in legislation, we deletes the word woman from legislation. Obviously, it was put back in because there was an outcry throughout the country at the bubble because the bubble didn't understand what, you know, how, how angry people were, and the government responded to that. But we also saw the, the HSE uh, develop uh, leaflets uh, in terms of cervical cancer, which spoke of women as people with a cervix. And many women uh, do not want their identity to be deleted uh, in terms uh, of that. So it's, you know, that, that ideology that is at the heart of government policy at the moment, many people are fearful that this bill will be used to delete the opportunity of people to speak respectfully and openly uh, against uh, that particular ideology. Um, Minister, I mentioned obviously the distraction of the political class in terms of the focus of the culture wars and of um, identity politics um, and, not, and not focusing on the bread and butter issues. And, you know, I've been looking at the bills that have come out from your department in recent times, and many of the bills focus on those issues instead of the real bread and butter issues that are, people are dealing with uh, at home. So, you know, as you know, I've put in a lot of parliamentary questions to you, to you recently. One of those questions showed that 2,100 Gardaí have been physically assaulted over the last 10 years. 400 Gardaí have resigned in the last five years. Only 24 Gardaí have actually started Garda Training College this whole year so far. Uh, that there are two, hundreds of people, uh, Gardaí resigning from the Garda Force. That the Garda Reserve Force is at nearly an all-time low at the moment. That Ireland has one of the lowest numbers of Gardaí in the uh, police in the whole of Europe. That your own constituency minister has the lowest number of Gardaí in the whole country. That there are districts in your constituency that have zero detection rates for the first six months of this year in, 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 in certain types of crimes, Minister. And many people think that the job of the Minister for Justice is actually to focus on the safety and the protection of citizens, the real bread and butter stuff. And yet that's, that does not seem to be happening. And I think you know, people would feel safer at night if there was more focus by your department on these issues as well as the other issues too, Minister. I would urge you to rethink this bill. Um, I too, I want a society where citizens can engage respectfully with empathy, with generosity, to views and ideas that they profoundly disagree with. I believe that that can be achieved culturally in society by trying to raise our children with respect in many other areas, but I believe this bill actually takes away uh, human rights of citizens. It reduces the liberty, the freedom of citizens to democratically express themselves, 
uh, and the so-called definitions on this bill are so ill-defined that they are wide open to misinterpretation and abuse. And I, like many others, feel that this will inhibit the ability for honest democratic discourse uh, and, as a result, will weaken society's ability to grapple with the real and significant challenges uh, that we face. I, I believe that this bill is a threat to the democratic function of our society in the long term. Um, I think your, your bill is also out of step with the views of, of people uh, in many ways, and it's out of step with the most recent scientific and medical practice uh, in relation to some of the aspects that you seek to protect uh, in this bill. So I'd urge the Minister to withdraw this bill. I also, just with the few seconds that I have left, if I can, I want to just raise with you, Minister, and you might be able to have some influence in this, that tomorrow there is a planned rolling closure of protests of childcare and ECCE facilities. As you know, the Minister for Children has introduced core funding plan, which will make it impossible for thousands of small childcare facilities to survive. Hundreds of these businesses have closed already, and hundreds more will close in the coming months, unless the Minister for Children provides a fair amount of funding. Those owners will be protesting at five different locations from Cork, Mayo, Ennis, Toom, uh, and Dublin tomorrow. They will close their facilities. Uh, Tens of thousands of parents will be discommoded because they won't have any place to send their children uh, to tomorrow. And this is the first of a rolling number of closures. Uh, I would ask for the Minister of Children to meet uh, these business owners ASAP with a real plan to make sure that the business can function. Gurv Mahogat.